The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to our Skills for Work and Life regular webinars. This is the November edition of our regular uh, Skills for Work and Life webinars. Each month we have a different topic and today our focus will be on our ESOL qualifications and how we can support learners beyond ESOL. So just before we start, a few usual housekeeping points. This session is being recorded. Uh, the slides and the recording will be available via the, um, the Skills for Work and Life resource hub uh, webpage shortly, probably early next week. We have put everyone on mute and, and currently the question box is not available, but we will turn that on towards the end of the webinar as we will dedicate some time uh, for you to ask some questions. And last but not least, if you are having any technical issues, uh, please try logging out and logging back in uh, as that just seems to work. So if you are experiencing any sound issues through your computer, you can also join by telephone by selecting phone call in the audio pane. So there is just the two of us today. You have myself, Alicia Tvarowska, and also Catherine Reed. We are your technical advisors supporting you with functional skills, ESOL and employability qualifications. This is our third, uh, this is the third of our regular webinars for 2023, um, for the academic year, should I say, 2023-24. And during this session, we will be updating you on the level two and below consultation. Then on to our main focus, which will be the ESOL skills for life, life qualifications. And in the second part, how you can enhance your learners courses to support them further and beyond language learning. At the end, as I mentioned earlier, we will open up for the normal Q&A part where we will try our best to answer all of your questions live. If not, we will just take them away. And not forgetting, we also have a couple of our infamous polls along the way. Uh, they're really useful for us to gauge, the, to gauge you, our audience, um, that we've got with you, we've got on, on the call today, on the webinar today. Also, it checks to see if you are still with us. It is Friday afternoon after all. I put myself on mute and I have no idea why I did that until it's Friday afternoon. So as you will be aware from our email updates, we have been busy migrating our functional skills exams from the old flash content to HTML. Just in case you missed these updates, you can find the notices on our Skills for Work and Life customer updates page. Uh, and that one is dated the 3rd, 13th of June and the 11th of September. As a result of this update, we have a schedule of release of new versions of each exam subject to create a new bank of HTML assessments. As these are brand new papers, they must go through an awarding process to ensure fair and valid results for all candidates, as explained in the qualification handbooks, which can be found on the 4748 qualification page. While we endeavour to issue all results promptly within our normal 20 working days, in the case of awarding new papers, results may take up to 32 working days. Now we appreciate the candidates and their teachers anxiously await their functional skills results once they have taken their exam. We would ask you that you only contact us to inquire about results where the 32 working days have elapsed. So this is just so our exams management and customer services team can focus on getting the results out to you as soon as possible. Once we have released and awarded a full bank of papers, we will then we will see the results released turn around uh, around turn to the levels we were reporting on last academic year. So now moving on to the ESOL updates. Uh, <clears throat> in October last year, the, the Department of Education published their response to the consultation 
about the review of qualifications at level two and below, that's for learners aged 16 and over in England. We were delighted that the government have recognised the worth of ESOL qualifications and that they will intend to continue to fund ESOL from entry one through to level two. The consultation confirmed that the existing framework of ESOL qualifications at level two and below is highly valued for supporting a diverse range of learners to meet their, their social, educational and employment aims. As you may be aware, ESOL Skills for Life qualifications are currently mapped against the national standards for adult literacy, with the adult ESOL core curriculum providing additional detail to support teaching that is responsive to the particular needs of ESOL learners. Responses of this consultation indicated that the national standards and the core curriculum continue to provide a valuable basis for regulating ESOL qualifications and while wholesale change is not needed, there is a need to consider some updates, particularly in the light of changes to other qualifications, such as GCSE English and functional skills. Currently, all qualifications at level two and below are under review and the development of new qualifications across all sectors has begun and is happening in waves. The changes to ESL will not be due for teaching until September 2028, so we expect consultations about the content and design of ESOL qualifications to start to take place from the end of this year. Ahead of the full review, Ofco and the awarding organisations who offer ESOL Skills for Life qualifications continue to monitor them to ensure they are fit for purpose. Now, another update. Uh, so we have removed the level one hobbies and interests pack from our live exams at level one. It, it must not be used as of the 1st of uh, November this year. If your learners sat any of the assessments from this pack between 21st and 31st of October, please get in touch with us at our pre-employment inbox. And we have a couple of other reminders in case you have not, they have not reached you yet. Firstly, following feedback from customers, we have decided to permit virtual supervision of ESOL Skills for Life assessments. This includes speaking, listening and writing at all levels and reading at entry levels. Reading at level one and two must be invigilated and we do offer a remote invigilation service which can be used for these. And finally, a couple more reminders. Starting last academic year, centres who have learners who achieve the single mode awards, 4692-01, will be required to not only request recognition for the completed unit, but also provide a certification code to generate their certificate. These codes are in the 900 series and can be found on World Garden. We are also happy to confirm that the final registration dates of all our ESOL qualifications have, be, have been extended beyond December 2023 and until the 31st of August 2027. You will find the details on the website and World Garden. So just before we go into the main content of the webinar, we just want to do a quick Oh, so Elixir is just going to launch that now. So firstly, we just want to know, are you currently using our ESOL qualifications? Everybody's hot off the mark. We're getting um, responses already. 90% um, of people have voted already, so that's really good. A couple more people left. So a few more seconds to finish. We've got most people are doing our qualifications, but it's interesting mm -hmm. to see. Good to see, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, right. So I'm going to close the poll now. 
Okay. And, and do you want to share that one? Oh, lovely. So we've got 69% saying yes, 17% saying no, and 14% no, but you are thinking about using them. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you for that one. Very interesting. We just like to gauge who the audience is today. And uh, Elitza, if you'd like to launch the second question. So okay, secondly, awesome. we'd like to know if you are currently using uh, ESOL qualifications, um, we'd like to know, um, are you using the individual awards or the full certificate qualifications? So are you using just reading, writing, or speaking and listening, uh, or, or all three? If you if you was a no, you can just click the NA one was, as well. You're all very hot off the mark for a Friday afternoon. Definitely, lots of answers coming through. Okay, ninety percent have uh, ninety percent of people have voted, or nearly ninety. If you're not able to take part in the polls, you can just email um, us or pop it in the Q and A box when we open it up a little bit later on. But it looks like everybody can today. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's starting to slow down now, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll now and share the results. Yeah, it's interesting that 39% are using all three components. Uh, we've got 32% mm -hmm. just using reading, 29% just using writing, 32% using speaking and listening, and obviously we've got the 25% it's not applicable to. That's brilliant. Thank you for that. That just gives us some really useful insights. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so let's move on to the next part. So um, we thought it would be worth running through some key points about our qualification offer and start with a reminder that these qualifications are delivered in England, Northern Ireland and Wales. Scotland has its own set of ESOL literacies that are mapped to their SQA framework. We'll look at the qualifications we have available, just a quick glance, how the assessments work, where you will find things, and a quick look at administering and quality assuring assessments. Each award is a qualification in its own right. So at entry one, for example, we have a reading qualification, a writing qualification, and a speaking and listening qualification. Each of these can be taken and certified as a full qualification. The advantage of this is that learners often present with a spiky profile and this allows them to demonstrate their achievement in each subject at the relevant level. We have included a table of, that sets out the guided learning hours and the total qualification time for each mode as well as the qualification number for each qualification. Alternatively, you can deliver all three modes to make up an ESOL Skills for Life certificate. In this case, the candidate must take the individual unit at or, at or above the level of the certificate that they are taking. If you have a candidate who achieves all three components, so that's reading, writing and the speaking listening as individual awards, you can top up to a full certificate size qualification by registering and claiming under 4692-92 and this route can also be used where candidates have achieved individual awards with other awarding organisations. These can be used alongside the units achieved through city and guilds to claim the full certificate. Now, we know the different ways we could deliver these qualifications. So let's look at the three different linguistic modes. Entry level reading and all levels in writing and speaking and listening are all assessed by assignment. They are externally set by City and Girls and internally marked by the centre. They are available to administer as soon as the candidates are registered. And there is a choice of assignments uh, available to download from the qualification page. Candidates do not have to complete the whole assignment in a single session and activities can be done in any order. 
If the candidate is successful, another assignment on a different topic needs to be completed. <clears throat> For readings level one and two, these are assessed by multiple choice tests and are externally set and marked by city and guilds. The tests are available on demand, both, on, both online and paper. There are simple tests in both formats available from the qualification webpage. And just for your information, we have included the assessment model so that you can refer to the assessments at a glance. You've got here the number of tasks they include and the time allocated to complete, which is always quite handy to have as an overview. And we couldn't complete the overview without pointing you to the key documents for the ESOL qualifications that can all be found on the 4692 qualification page. First of all, the qualification handbook, which sets out learning outcomes, assessment criteria, and administrative, uh, administrative arrange, arrangements for delivery. Then we've got the adult ESOL core curriculum on the website as well, available for you, which sets out teaching and learning expectations, as well as the adult literacy national standards on which these qualifications are based. You can also find the sample and life assessments assignments under each level under the, under the documents tab on the ESOL qualifications page. And then finally, you can access the updated remote assessment guide on our website should you wish your learners to see the assessment this way. To help you to navigate through our web pages with more ease, we have included the links for the qualifications a landing page where you can quickly access the qualifications, and this includes ESOL. From the bottom row of tiles of the page, you can access firstly the resource hub with the information on all our platforms and recordings of previous webinars. In the middle uh, on the bottom row, you can see our events and networks tile, which gives you all the information of the online and in-person events for which you can register for. And in the, on the last tile on the bottom row, you can access all the important updates that we were just mentioning earlier on. So if you have missed one or you've not subscribed to our email updates, you can access um, the past ones there. The other essential page you may need to access is to the Centre Document Library. This is where you can find all the quality assurance documents and access arrangements guidance documents. Catherine, you're still on mute. Oh, I don't know why I keep doing that today. I'm so sorry, I'm clearly not as alert as the audience. So how can we support ESOL learners beyond language learning? We are confident you already do a lot within your settings. However, we are going to show you now how City and Girls can support you in recognising what you already do and possibly stretch this a little bit more. Right, so a number of our customers have started to explore ways to support their ESOL learners with their English language skills beyond ESOL qualifications, using qualifications such as the developmental maths units from the mathematics skills, which is 3847. Topics here are, include time, money and travel, and this can be explored improving language acquisition, as well as offering the opportunity to improve numeracy skills. And secondly, we have customers where the ESOL teams are delivering functional skills maths at entry level to their learners. And this is again a vehicle not only to explore language, but also boost numeracy skills both in life and work. Then we've got employability skills, which has a large number of units which cover traditional job search and personal and social development uh, topics, all of which can be very supportive for learners new to the UK and who may be looking to improve their employment opportunities. Units from our personal progress entry one suite are being used very successfully by a number of providers for learners who are not yet ready to start studying ESOL and 
uh, we, and which are at pre-entry. This is a useful qualification where assessment is done on a continuing uh, uh, on a continuum. And then finally, we've got digital skills uh, there uh, in the form of our our digital digital functional skills qualifications, uh, which already launched in September this academic year. We'll review all of these options in a minute, providing a few more details. So starting with the digital skills, we have a paid for resource platform, which is called Journey to English, which forms a digital course for intermediate learners of English. Through an engaging self-study model, learners can access hundreds of hours of interactive content designed around a journey through the UK. To recognise and develop learners' digital skills, we have just launched new digital functional skills qualifications, or DFSQ as we like to call it. They are based on the subject content devised by the Department for Education, and these qualifications are designed to enable students to gain confidence, positive attitude and fluency in their use of digital knowledge and skills, both in the workplace and in life generally. The qualification will be available and funded at two levels, entry three and level one. To support you in starting out in these qualifications, we run a monthly new to digital functional skills qualification session. All the dates can be found on the events webpage. So the content of these qualifications covers five digital skills areas, and these will need to be covered in teaching as well as in the assessment. The first is using devices and handling information. The second is around creating and editing. The third is about communicating. And the fourth is transactions online. And then finally, the fifth is about being safe and responsible online. So what about learners that are new to the digital world? To support learners who are not ready for entry three, DFSQ, we do have a couple of options. The first one is from the Personal Progress Suite, which is a unit on developing ICT skills. These are aimed at learners at entry one. The other options are units from the Employability Portfolio, so Intro to ICT, and these are at entry two and entry three. In terms of English and maths, we have a paid for smart screen platform, which contains an abundance of maths resources available from entry level three. At maths and English, actually, these can be used for both for face to face and online uh, lessons and activities can be assigned individually to learners, depending on their needs. We have consolidated our English and ESOL resources into a single bank. The content itself is not specific to a particular qualification. Instead, they are flexible and can be used to support the learning relating to developing written and spoken English and getting the best from reading. Our next webinar in December will provide a detailed walkthrough what is available here, should you be interested. We are all aware of the functional skills qualifications for English and mathematics, but we also have other options available. In order to develop and formally recognise learners' English and math skills, we have a collection of bite-sized units available from entry level one. Each of these units focuses on a specific area of the adult numeracy or adult literacy uh, curriculum and can be recognised as an award or qualification in its own right although they can be also grouped together in larger themed units, awards and certificates. Um, as this suite is portfolio based, and this is the Mathematics English Skills 3847 qualification we're talking about here, uh, the content of the delivery and assessment can be adapted to ESOL learners. The other qualification that we have is the principles of Mathematics and English, which are available from entry three up to level two. The qualification is assessed through a one-off on-screen test, which does give an instant result. 
Both of these qualifications form, can form to support towards transition into main functional skills qualifications or perhaps a stepping stone to the next level. Another suite of qualifications that can enhance your ESOL provision are our employability units, which are assessed by a portfolio of evidence developed by the learner. The aims of these qualifications are to meet the needs of learners who wish to seek, gain and retain employment, or maybe progress to further learning or within their career. They also aim to provide a valuable accreditation of learners' attitudes, skills and knowledge without requiring or proving occupational competence. And another aim is to boost independence within personal and work life. Let's look at some example unit titles from this portfolio. So as you can see here, there is a small selection. We've chosen a selection of topics that are covered in the units and you can choose from these to build a program and support your ESOL learners. These include not only employability, but also digital at lower levels, sustainability and green skills. And very quickly, before we open up for our Q&A session, um, let's have a quick look at another qualification that sits under the employability umbrella, which is personal progress. Available at entry level one, this suite of qualifications enables learners to develop their personal and social abilities. These qualifications, which were originally designed to help individuals who may have li limited, um, limited skills or experience in education, training or work, to build their confidence and abilities in a supportive and inclusive environment. They have supported a wider audience in the recent years in preparing learners who are not yet ready for ESOL Skills for Life qualifications to develop and progress into their other qualifications. Units covered uh, topics such as communication skills, mathematics, including money management and budgeting, independent life skills such as travel and transport, social skills and health and hygiene, and workplace skills such as punctuality, reliability and teamwork. You simply select the units which, your uh, which suit your program and your learners' needs. So we're going to move on now to our final poll. So if you let you, you can join that. Uh, sorry, launch that again. If you just if you just want to give us some insights, uh, we just want to find out what your knowledge is, is regarding our digital credentials, and we just like to know were you aware. Uh, that a learner will be allocated a digital credential once they have passed their functional skills exam. So the votes are coming in very quickly and it's interesting to see the initial results, which we're going to um, reveal in just a moment. Uh, nearly everyone has voted. So just going to give it a, a, a few more seconds. It is slowing down. Right, so I'm going to close the poll now. Thank you, Alicia. So if you share that, we can see that we've got a large number of people here that aren't actually aware of these digital functional skills credentials. We were, we were running some of these polls last academic year in our other webinars, so it's very interesting to see if you're aware of them or not. So uh, for those that of you that are not aware of these digital credentials uh, that uh, your learners are entitled to, uh, so these are a digital representation of a skills achievement. Uh, so as mentioned earlier, they are not only shareable, but also informative, whereby one click, uh, these can show an onlooker the metadata and the details of the standards that have been met to achieve this credential. So in order for a learner to claim this digital credential, uh, we will need their email address in World Garden. Uh, so uh, it's not a mandatory field, but it's something that you know, if, you, if you complete that part of the, uh, of the form, when you're registering a learner, 
then they will get um, a digital credential. So once they are successful in gaining their qualification uh, that they have worked so hard for, they will receive an email from a platform called Credly, uh, which will invite them to accept this credential. And from there, they can claim and, and then share this across their, their social networks, for example, LinkedIn. And then they can also embed these into their profiles, websites, uh, email footers or um, digital uh, CVs. CTM Guilds offer a range of digital credentials for their qualifications and standards. And we also have a bespoke credentialing service. If this is something you wish to know more about, please email at uh, please email us at digitalsales@ctmguilds.com. And I know that Catherine has opened up the question and answer function now. And just before we move on to your questions, we wanted to add how to stay up to date. So the most uh, efficient way is to sign up to our email updates. And then we suggest that if you are already signed up, please refresh your preferences to ensure all correspondence reaches you. And another way is to go through our updates uh, uh, via our website. So you can find this on our website uh, and they will they, they, it will contain all of those that we have shared via email as well. Catherine, do we have you on mute? Yes, that's the third time this afternoon. Sorry, everybody. So the question box is, uh, is now open. Ah, we can see that people are starting to come in. Um, right. So we've got a question off Janet. Are the 3847 Maths English units equivalent to functional skills levels? Right. So this is that same question, isn't it? As is functional skills an equivalent to a GCSE? They're all sort of like what we call refer to as alternatives, um, Janet. Um, now, obviously, it's it, it does show the learners that are capable to work at appropriate levels, but, you know, again, for apprenticeships, the learners need to do the functional skills qualifications or an employer might want the functional skills qualifications, just like some people are recognising the GCSEs. So it is an alternative, I would say. There you go, Janet. That's the that's the word that we use because they don't they don't all seem to have the same carry that same funding, as it were, like uh, functional skills doesn't carry the same funding as GCSE. So, uh, Brenda, you've asked, do we have the guided learning, learning hours for these credentials, employability, personal progress, et cetera? Um, yes. So if you go into um, the website, which I think the links are actually on there, um, you can actually just go in and the guided learning hours and everything will be there for you, Brenda. I'm not sure if we put them actually in the slide or have we? Um, I don't. No. We have that. No. Yeah, if you go into each, uh, if you go into each of these qualifications, like with employability, it will depend on the size, whether you're doing a couple of units or an award or certificate. So, uh, depending on what, um, uh, how big uh, of a qualification you choose, that will give you uh, the guided learning hours. All of those will be uh, in the in the qualification handbooks. Yeah, it's difficult for us to display, Brenda. Um, can you give me the information about the oh oh the hobbies again? So that was, was that the update at the beginning, Vivian? Yeah, that that will be the update, I believe. Yeah, so I can repeat that. Yeah, so uh, so uh, we have removed the level one, just the level one hobbies and interest pack from our uh, life exams, and. So this must not be used as of the 1st of November this year. But if your learners have recently sat uh, uh, any of the assessments from that pack at level one, then please get in touch with us at the pre-employment inbox so that we can agree with the EQA and others uh, the course of action. So I hope that has answered uh, the question, uh, Vivian. Um, we are, we will be uploading the slides as well, Vivian, along with the recording, and they'll all be mm -hmm. available in the resource hub. So, you know, if you want to download the slides, that information is there for you to take back to any internal teams as well, or you can send them the link. 
Okay. Uh, the next question, the ESOL resources that you've talked about, are they accessible to every teacher free of charge? How can they be accessed? Um, so, yes. So, in terms of the, I believe, were you referring to the Click to Learn? Was that the maybe one you were referring to? Yeah, uh, maybe journey, sorry, journey. journey to English one. Yeah, so that's yeah. a paid for platform. Yes. So if that's something that you're interested in using, uh, you need to get in touch with us. Yeah, yeah, I can just, sorry, I can just see your comments now. And Alicia, um, somebody, Brenda's just asking, can you pop up the click to learn slide again? If we can just move yeah. that one back a bit. That's great, just for Brenda. Right, I'm just moving back to that. So just a second. It's maths and English. Smart screen. It's a bit slow as it's Friday. So yeah, that's the one I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the journey to English. There is a video on the qualification page, I believe. Yeah, so you can view that video on the qualification page and it will give you a, a good insight of what's included. All of the resources are interactive and the learner can uh, yeah, can, can actually uh, carry out the tasks. It marks the answers for automatically for the learners. So, and then you, you can track the progress as well of uh, who completes what. Uh, so it's, it's quite a handy tool. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Brenda just took a screenshot of it, but yeah, we'll get those slides up for you. They should be on the website um, either later today or um, first thing on Monday. So there you go. Um, Tim's got a question. Oh, yes. So will there uh, will there be any more sample papers added, or can you suggest any alternatives? Uh, so uh, we are uh, going to um, to release a new uh, live paper soon, and then following that, I'm not sure how soon. Soon, it's not been confirmed. Uh, that there might be uh, uh, one one new sample paper, but I think there's, there needs to be a gap, uh, it, doesn't it? Um, Catherine, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so to yeah. it'll have to stay off, it'll have to sort of be put to one side. I, th I think they call it a resting period, mm -hmm. and that's to ensure that nobody else is actually using it. So um, I'm not sure how long the resting period is. It's not too long, but yeah, once those are done, then they'll be put into um, sample papers, yeah. And we have yes, talked exactly. back about using different um, topics as well, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So just to to repeat, so we are going to release one new live paper and one of and and there is a discussion about one of the uh, old live papers to be removed and turned into a sample, but the, it needs a bit of a, a resting period, as Kathleen said. So Lubov asked, you, you talked about some more resources. Uh, so uh, Lubov, if you could just uh, remind us or maybe just uh, let us know what resources you've mentioned. Uh, maybe it was the smart screen. Oh. Uh, yes, yeah, so smart screen was all, is also a paid for platform. I'm just going to quickly move to that slide. Uh, so that would include maths and English content, but uh, I can't see uh, any reason why ESOL learners wouldn't be, uh, some of the ESOL learners, you know, they, they could use that as well and benefit uh, from it. But it is a paid for platform and we've got a webinar coming up at the beginning of December where I'll be going to uh, to review what's what's on it uh, and give you some examples. So feel free to to join us. Or yeah, get in touch and we can yeah we can um, do a bit of a walkthrough as well with you. Yeah, we do have um, dedicated digital solutions managers. So if you do want to have a look at it, um, we can get them to just give you a, a sort of um, a walk through the platform, or we can do it. But they are the you know they're really good at this, and sometimes they can give you like a some time to actually look through the platform yourself. Okay, so Janet. Janet. Oh yes, sorry, Litsy. Yeah, we were both oh, both going to say the same thing, weren't we? So Janet, um, we haven't heard anything about that, Janet. We'll take that back. So you're saying there's been some issues with the HTML platform 
freezing. Um, we haven't heard anything. We will take that internally and ask for you. Um, but what I would say, Janet, is um, you have reported it. That, right, that's great. Um, I haven't heard of any technical issues, um, Janet. So oh, obviously there's teething problems whenever a, first, a new platform starts. But if you can go back in and then, you know, check again for me if there's any other issues and then just get back to us. But yes, do, do sort of feed that to customer support. And we've got a question uh, from Vivian, uh, which resources are free to our learners? So we've got sample papers available uh, that you can use with your learners. These are free. Uh, and um, yeah, so there is, yeah. And then functional skills, maybe uh, practice papers as well, but not sure if they, yeah, they would be the best, but definitely sample papers for the ESOL assessments are free for your learners to, to use. And Tim's asking about dictionaries, Alexia. You might, you're closer to the ESOL to answer this one. So he's wanting right. to know, can learners use uh, monolingual Mono English dictionaries, dictionaries? Right. I, I wouldn't know it from the top of my head, oh. but I can definitely check it. Uh, it will be definitely in the qualification handbook. Uh, so, um, yeah, Tim, Tim, if you can't find it, if you want to email us on the pre employment at sittinggirls.com, but yeah. Um, just as Alicia said, just have a quick look in the handbook. Usually there's a page, isn't there, straight away that tells you what what they can and cannot use. Mm -hmm. And it may also vary uh, between exams. So they, they might be allowed in reading or writing, but not in the other one. I would have to double check it, Tim. So have a look at the qualification page. And if you can't find it, just let us know, as Catherine said. And then the last question that we've got, because I'm just conscious of time now. Uh, my learners would like to see an example of a speaking task two, speaking task three, entry three level. Do you have any official videos that I can use? Um, we've been asking centres to sort of give us some videos. So I'm, I've been at Sitting Girls five years and I know for five years I've been asking for any centres that want to submit any videos. So, no, we don't have any official videos, um, but we're always open to talking to centres if they want to provide some for us or um, if they've got any drama students or anything like that. But no, we're short on those, but we are looking into potentially having some made for us, but I haven't heard anything about that just yet. But uh, Lubov, if, you, if you're interested in uh, working with us to get some uh, some examples uh, published, then uh, we would, that would be more than welcome. Uh, so let us know in the pre-employment pre inbox and we can always um, have a, a quick catch up to discuss. Um, and then uh, Janet is asking about any support with IQA and ESOL. So, um, so, so with with the IQA and ESOL, so your EQA will definitely be the first point of uh, support uh, in terms of IQA. But we also have um, um, our virtual ESOL link up sessions, which are online. Uh, we've got one at the beginning of December. So, although we're not doing any sort of like IQ weighing, uh, we're, we're attempting, like we would, we will be facilitating uh, in that session uh, a bit of marking and assessment so so that you can see how others mark and there will be like an open discussion uh, with that. Uh, so so you're more than welcome to, to join or um, uh, select someone from your team to join and then cascade. These are free for you as our City and Guilds customers. And we're also planning a face-to-face -face ESOL uh, event, just looking for a venue. So if it's something uh, that you would be interested in hosting, please let us know and we're more than happy to organize and again you know that would also include a bit of uh, assessment uh, discussion so obviously our role is not to uh, quality assure or tell you about, like tell you about the quality standards but we can facilitate the discussion around uh, IQA and and assessment so uh, yeah please join us or let us know if you would like to um, facilitate a session at your center as well. Catherine, is there anything else to add on to that? Um, no, just on another thing, because then I'm just really conscious of time because we'll move on. Um, somebody's popped in the chat that bilingual paper dictionaries are allowed at entry level. So that's something for you off the top of my head there. But yeah, let's move on now, Alicia, because um, I'm just conscious it's quarter past four and people will be wanting to get home. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So uh, included throughout the webinar, uh, you will have uh, some useful links, but just, just to add here at the end, there are some useful email contacts here for general queries, including Evolve and uh, remote individualization issues, you can contact our centre support team. And then for any maths, English or ESOL inquiries, you can contact one of us directly via our pre-employment uh, inbox. So it just remains to say thank you very much for taking the time to join for joining us today, particularly late on a Friday afternoon. We will be running our next digital resources webinar on Monday the 4th of December at 12.30 p.m. The registration is available on our events web page. We will keep the webinar running for a couple of more minutes at the end, just in case you've got any further questions or queries, um, and we will be taking those away. So thank you again, and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you soon, everyone.